I was gonna try and quote the Nicole Kidman AMC ad, but there's no way I could recapture the glory of that. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going through my favorite movie theater experiences of all time. A lot of times I get asked, what's your worst movie theater experience? I'll have that saved for another video. But today I wanted to highlight some of my personal favorite movie theater experiences. And before I do, be sure to hit that like button. Comment down below your favorite movie theater experiences of all time. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 85,000 subscribers here on the channel. And check out my Patreon link down below. Anything goes a long way over there. You get the Discord server or lots of other content. Consider checking it out, link down below. All right, so these aren't really in any order. I just have like 10 to 15 written down that I wanted to highlight as some of my favorite movie theater experiences I've ever had. So first, I'm gonna start with the most recent one that I really admired, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I was able to see this movie in theaters as it was re-released leading up to Dial of Destiny, and it was the most immersive experience I've had with this movie. Like, I've watched Raiders like hundreds of times in my life, it feels like, and so I know the movie really, really well, but this was the first time I saw it on the big screen, and I felt like I was able to see things and hear things that I hadn't prior to this viewing. The surround sound in that theater just enhanced the viewing experience for me, and of course, seeing this classic 80s film on crystal clear picture was awesome. This is the best Raiders has ever looked. It is in my top five favorite films of all time. Right now, it's almost number one. So seeing that on the big screen was so special. It's something I will cherish forever. And I hope to see the rest of the Indiana Jones movies in theaters. I've seen three of the five. I need to watch Temple of Doom and Crusade on the big screen, but that's gonna happen one day. I'm confident of it. Next on my list is another film that I saw re-release, and this was Inception. In 2020, I got a 10 year anniversary re-release and I was able to see Inception on the big screen because I missed it during its first theatrical run back in 2010. This re-release also happened during the pandemic, so it was one of the first times I got back to the theater, really, and it was so awesome to see on the big screen. Hearing that Hans Zimmer score and surround sound just shaking my seat was awesome, but experiencing this movie, which is my favorite Christopher Nolan film, in a theater was just something special. Every Nolan movie that I've seen on the big screen just hits different, and I wish that I could watch movies like this exclusively in theaters, honestly. Just like have my own private theater where I could watch all these big Nolan movies, that would be the best. These next two are special to me because they're some of the first movies I saw in theaters with my girlfriend Cam. We started dating in 2016, and this, these were just some of our first movie dates. So the first movie date we ever had was Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. This was the day after we started dating, and I was just so excited to go to the movies with her, and I had already seen the movie at the early showing on Thursday, but we went, I think, Saturday or Sunday, and we watched it, and we both really enjoyed it. Obviously, I don't think it is a top-tier Star Wars movie, but that Vader scene alone is so special, and whenever I think of Rogue One, I will always associate it with the first movie date with my girlfriend, so that's a special one. And only a few days after that, we went and saw La La Land, because I loved Whiplash at the time. I was like, uh, Dam new Damien Chazelle movie's coming out, it's a musical, she loved musicals, and we hadn't been dating for very long, but we went and saw La La Land together, and it's just such a beautiful movie that, at the time, really struck a chord with me, because it was like, I would don't want this to happen to me where like I really like this girl I'm dating and I don't want us to grow apart or have passions get in the way and fortunately we're still together to this day. Watching that movie obviously I think it's masterfully made. The, the music, the dance choreography, the story, all of that is very well done but then after the film it really like just struck a chord with me and we had like great conversation just about our relationship and our future. So it's another one of those movies that I, I hold near and dear to my heart and I was so glad I got to experience in the cinema. Next I'm going with Lone Survivor. This was the first R-rated movie that I ever saw in theaters. I think it came out in like 2013 and I had just always wanted to see an R-rated film in theaters. I was 13 at the time and my dad was like, we'll go see this one. So it was so cool to see an R-rated movie. The war action and the language, I was like, oh, I'm in the theater and I shouldn't be here, it's so cool. It was really neat. The movie obviously very tragic, very sad story. Um, but it is the first R-rated film I've seen in theater, so I had to shout it out here. We're going back to Christopher Nolan for this next one, as I saw Tenet in theaters twice, opening night, and then I went directly the next night to watch it again, just to try and process everything again, because it's a lot to take in with that movie. But the reason this movie is so special to me is because it's the first big movie I saw in theaters post-pandemic. Obviously, in March, the world shut down, and it wasn't until pretty much the last day of August when I saw this movie. And so for months, I had been like, oh, I want to go back to the theater. And getting back to a Christopher Nolan movie in Tenet was so special. The movie ruled on the big screen, the the action, the score, everything about it. This movie's just so awesome. Um, and so it was a great one to get back to the theater for. Now, I did watch New Mutants, I think, the day prior or the day after. But regardless, uh, I, don't, I just missed that. This is the first big, big movie that I was so pumped for to see on the big screen. And it was just great to get back in the theater at that time. The next pick is Top Gun Maverick, which I saw at an early screening in IMAX 
Max. The reason this one's so cool to me is I was able to take my dad and he loved the first Top Gun. It's the movie that when he saw in the 80s in theaters, he went like back to back days to see it. So I had to bring my dad with me for this early screening and it was so cool. It's one of the loudest movies I've ever seen in theaters. It was so immersive. It felt like I was flying one of these jets alongside Tom Cruise in the film. And it is my favorite movie of 2022, as you guys can tell from the poster in the background probably. I adore this one and it was really cool to see this in theaters with my dad because the first Top Gun is a movie that he loved seeing in theaters back in the day. So it was like a really cool moment for me to be able to bring him to an early screening of a sequel to one of his favorite movies. The next movie is not a great movie. It's enjoyable enough, but the reason it's on the list is because I was the only person in the theater. It's the only time in my entire life where I've been the only person in the movie theater. And that movie is Ambulance. This is a Michael Bay film starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Yahya Abdul-Mateen. The movie is fine. I thought it was pretty entertaining action flick, uh, some heist vibes in there for the most part. And it's nothing special. Like I enjoyed my time. I've seen it twice now. I watched it once in theaters and once with my girlfriend afterwards. However, the movie theater was empty. That never happens to me. It was like a weekday at like two in the afternoon or something. And I was like, please don't show up. And I went to this older theater. So it was like classic seats. You didn't reserve your seat seat. There's no recliners. I was in the middle of the theater and like the previews were on. I was like, okay, no one's here, but that's happened to me before where people walk in during the previews. The movie starts, no one's here. I'm like 15 minutes in, no one's here. I think I finally won. It's the only movie ever where I was the only person in the cinema. Surreal, honestly. And I wish I could have a lot of movies like that because so many times people are disrupting or just being total assholes for no reason. So being alone, it was like, oh my God, this is my own theater. This is my house, essentially. I was so relaxed. And um, I think that's why I like the movie more than most people. Obviously, Obviously not a great movie, one of the better Michael Bay films I've seen, uh, but being alone in the theater for it was so, so cool. You guys already knew this next one had to be on this list, Spider-Man No Way Home. I will never forget going opening night to this movie and seeing all three Spider-Men on screen together in a theater that was roaring with applause and cheers. It is the loudest movie theater experience I've had in terms of the crowd reacting and sharing that moment with my girlfriend Cam, myself, and then just all these other hardcore fans was so special. I will cherish this movie to the end of time. It's the ultimate Spider-Man movie and No Way Home was just such a joyous experience and time period in my life that of course, this is one of my favorite theatrical experiences. It's the movie I've seen the most in theaters, five times in theaters. Next, I've got the one, two, punch of Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. I went opening night of Avengers Infinity War. I remember the gasps in the crowd like, what? No way! When the snap happened, people just yelling out, no, that can't be! <laughs> Whenever their favorite character would just get dissolved away by the snap. Uh, the hype going into this movie was amazing and of course it's got its fist pump moments. The crowd was cheering when Thor came down on Wakanda and there was a lot of gasps as well. There was like a collective depression in the room as the credits rolled because A, we had to wait a whole year and B, half of the world just got wiped away in the MCU. So it was very tragic, but it's an experience. I'll just remember those gasps in that crowd. People were like, not Spider-Man. I, I remember people yelling out in the theater. So I was so confused and just trying to process everything. And then you roll around a year later, Avengers Endgame. I've seen some of those crowd reaction videos and people were just going nuts but I wasn't able to see the movie early at the Thursday screening, so I went Friday afternoon, and the theater was pretty silent the entire movie. Me and Cam were getting hyped, but everyone else was just like silent, and it was kind of lame, honestly. Obviously, I didn't take away from my enjoyment with the movie and my love for it, um, but it would have been even cooler if people actually got hyped. Like when Cap wielded Munner, dead silence. I was like looking at people like, am I the only one watching this right now? I was literally like, what the hell is happening? This movie is awesome. I was literally like silently going, yeah, it was so cool. I went back in IMAX, later and the crowd was a little more reactive there. However, I didn't have a No Way Home type experience with Avengers Endgame. No Way Home is the loudest crowd I've ever experienced in person. But taking the top spot for me is Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens. This was the first Star Wars movie I ever saw in theaters. As you guys know, Star Wars had a huge impact, impact on me growing up. It's the film series that got me into movies and really inspired my love for movies. So going and seeing this movie in theaters was so special. The hype was unreal leading up to it. I I mean, 10 years between Revenge of the Sith and this film is a long damn time to wait for a new Star Wars movie. There was a lot of uncertainty, a lot of excitement in the air. There was no divisiveness yet. People were just excited to be there for new Star Wars. And man, did it pay off because I loved The Force Awakens. And I actually went to a theater at the time that was 
classic. So you didn't have reserved seating, there was no recliners. So I had to get there like two hours early to get into the theater and get a good seat. And I was not disappointed with the experience. People were dressed up as their favorite characters. There were cheers as John Williams score blared when the Star Wars logo popped up on screen. It's a movie experience that I will hold near and dear to my heart forever. And I honestly wish I could go back to it sometimes. Like that is the ultimate movie experience for me. As much as I love the MCU, we were getting movies frequently then. This was the first Star Wars movie in a decade. From the time I was 5 to 15, all I had was six Star Wars movies in the Clone Wars show. And when this came out, I was over the moon excited, and I genuinely don't think I've been that excited for a movie ever, maybe. It's truly, I was so, so ready for Star Wars, and man, did it pay off at the time. So that takes the top spot for me in terms of my favorite movie theater experience, but let me know your favorite movie theater experiences in the comments down below, and be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help me reach my goal of 85,000 subscribers here on the channel. It'll mean a lot. And check out my Patreon link down below. Your support goes a long way over there. But again, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>